Greetings, everyone, and welcome to part two of a video which we uh, didn't quite get to answering the question of, and that was when and why do we Oops. imprison people, which we also actually were trying to get to, well, when do we decide not to imprison people? And that is the question which we will rather quickly answer here. Horst, when and why do we decide not to imprison people? Okay, so there's uh, a few factors here. I'll make it quick. The first is that we obviously cannot imprison someone um, whose guilt has not been established. Uh, if if someone is found not guilty, obviously they are not going to serve a custodial sentence because as far as the law is concerned, there isn't something to punish them for. Um one of the things related to this is we talked about standards of evidence previously. And in a courtroom, your honor, everyone knows this isn't actually evidence. You can have five people get in the witness box and say, oh, everyone knows that he was beating his wife. And it will still not be established uh, for the purposes of evidence that the accused is a wife beater. Um, mm. See, uh, Ben Robert Smith, I think his name was, who was... It was recently alleged in the media that he was a war criminal and a wife beater, and the court found that uh, having having established that the man was a war criminal, uh, the court should not be troubled to also determine whether being accused of wife beating was defamation, because surely being a war criminal was a bigger deal. It's just mm. funny to me. <laughs> so first, not being found guilty is a, a large reason that people don't go to jail. <laughs> it's probably yeah. the best reason not to go to jail. Second is that we have alternatives to jail. There are psychiatric rehabilitation programs. You can be ordered to attend therapy. If, for instance, you've been in a bar brawl and it went a little too far and someone fucking died, uh, mm -hmm. you... If you Although, express that only be manslaughter, sufficient which is contrition, like 10 years? yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, that's correct. Although, but if you express contrition, like accident, the court may right. order, yeah, if it's yeah, an accident, imagine... the court may order that you refrain yeah. from drinking alcohol for a while. Um, that that has been ordered in the past, yeah. and they may sentence that you be compliant with a treatment stuff. order. No, nope. yeah. no, nope. a treatment order is what would be prescribed there, where the court okay. says. You're, you're fucking heading off to therapy. You're going to therapy and we're not going to put you in jail because you already know that this was wrong and you're already screwed up about it. So we'd like mm -hmm. you to go and do therapy so that it doesn't happen again. And okay. that is one of those things where we, we look at reducing the harm done to everyone. Mm. Um, so kind of in like, another a, I guess like a special situation community service. where, yeah, well, I get, I'm, I'm, so I imagine like in a special situation where like, you know, maybe he got into the bar brawl, but then during it, he fell back, his head hit the corner of the table. That's how he died. Yes. You know, it was that's technically correct. because of the bar, bar brawl, but, you know, you very much didn't mean for that to happen. And, you know, because, you know, taking all that circumstance into account, you know, that's that's a situation where the judge would be like, you know, all right, here's your, you know, you got to do this therapy, you got to stay off alcohol for this long, you know, so on and so forth conditions. Um, you recall that in the Sentencing that, Act, yeah. we discovered the exercise of mercy. Yes, yes. I I do vaguely remember that, yeah. Like, if you accidentally kill someone, you've probably suffered enough. Mm. And the court may see fit to take that into account. Um, in the case of community service, sometimes an offence isn't serious enough to warrant a custodial sentence, Maybe you were caught tagging um, a building and, and maybe you are both repaying your debt to the community and learning not to do that again by learning just how much of a pain in the backside it is to clean off graffiti. That's where maybe 40 hours of community service, so a week of full time, might be considered appropriate. Um, mm -hmm. The <laughs> other reason that people sometimes like don't go to jail... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, some things some things stay the same. The Parliamentary Education Office introduces rules and laws by saying that 
rules are given for the good of society and the individual and that uh, non-compliance with rules has consequences. And that's what we teach at the year three level. And it is the same lesson that the courts teach to grown ass adults. Um, the, the remaining option as to why people may not go to jail is that they may have lawyers who can point out irregularities in procedure that happened with the court. They may be exceptionally well connected, or they may just mm. be, you know, ready I'm to die anyway. And so there's case. not really much point having them die in jail. Yeah. I'm kind of imagining the Bill Cosby case for the first part of that, you know, there was technically there was some technical thing about a procedure that meant that he got off, even though he was found guilty. Mm-hmm. It was like one one procedural <clears throat> abnormality. I mean that you know I think in that regard it's it's a failing of the criminal justice system. You know I think that, and I, I'm keen to hear what your thoughts would be on on this. You know how could that be reformed? How could we? How could we, I guess, um, I don't know, change that? What changes could we make to fix that, that, the potential for that miscarriage of justice where somebody who has been found guilty is then let off due to a procedural um, abnormality? I mean, my, my first idea is like just redo the trial, but without the abnormality or whatever. Um, but, you know, say like statute of limitations or whatever, um, you know, redo it um, as though it's being done on a previous date, you know, so that that doesn't come into play. Okay, so what we're looking at here is uh, Blackston's ratio, um, which is a uh, commentary on the law from the 1760s by William Blackston. And the exact comment uh, is, the law holds that it is better that ten guilty persons escape than that one innocent suffer. Um, When we refer to uh, Fortescue, who wrote De Laudibus Legat Angliae, which was another comment on the English law, he said one would much rather that twenty guilty persons escape the punishment of death than that one innocent person should be condemned and hanged. Um, if we look back in the 1100s, a Jewish theorist, uh, Maimonides, uh, has said that it is better and more satisfactory to acquit a thousand guilty per- persons than to put a single innocent one to death, uh, specifically citing that it is uh, a crime against God to punish an innocent person. Um, we okay, have a one, lot of history that's coming of that mind. concept. One thought that's coming to mind here is, you know, this this is similar to people's critique of utilitarianism, you know, which is like you basically have these two bad options. When <laughs> I mean, there's more it's options than death options. or letting them go. You know, there are more ways to deal with this than you know than death or letting bad people get away with with things. Um. Oh. You know, much in the same way that you don't just have to have to choose between two shitty options, you can create more. You can figure, you can figure out more. All it takes. I, I understand this, but what I'm saying is that the basic, the basic concept is that we do not want to inconvenience an innocent person either. An innocent person who is having their life delayed, having legal proceedings drag out, is already dealing with enough. We do not necessarily want to come up with new and creative ways of making sure that guilty people actually get corralled uh, because it carries the risk that innocence will be caught up with them. Though, with regards to utilitarianism, I am reminded of Chesterton, who wrote, the Christian ideal has not been tried and found wanting, it has been found difficult and not tried. Uh, While referring to uh, Christianity and the hypocrisy of Christianity, um, I feel that utilitarianism is fundamentally similar as a concept. It hasn't been tried and found wanting. Uh, people have decided it's too much effort. So basically what, what you're saying is that the 
the questions I'm, I'm putting forward as to what can be done to avoid this particular kind of miscarriage of justice um, haven't received a, a sufficient answer because people have decided it's too difficult. No, what I'm saying is that they haven't received a sufficient answer because the law, the law that we inherited, has held that it is better that guilty people should be go unpunished than that we should infringe on the rights of someone who has not harmed society. That is where we have decided that our bright line is. We would rather make sure that you have to prove a case, that a guilty person has to be demonstrably guilty beyond reasonable doubt. But what about, again, these um, are, if, if we get into the sentencing phase only... Well, again, we're talking about, you know, a procedural abnormality in a case where someone's guilt was established. They were proven guilty, found guilty, and it was literally just a procedural hiccup. You know, that, I mean, in that, it seemed, it, like, it's a fairly then clear in that situation case, in they which would case be we're entitled to a, a new trial. Philosophy. Yeah, we're letting a legalistic philosophy stop, you know, a stop essentially the course of justice. No, 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 then, no. If if we know. have that problem, we can have a mis we can have a retrial done. If we believe mm -hmm. that something interfered with the administration of justice, uh, whether it's a procedural issue, we can have a retrial. If a specific piece of evidence didn't follow rules of evidence, then we can say, okay, we're discarding that evidence, but we're not throwing the entire case out. We still need to try this. We still need to find out if there is guilt. The system does allow for a certain amount of recovery from procedural error. Um, it's just that the community's demands for justice are not always compatible with a humanist view of making sure that we do justice right. And the legal system, the judiciary, has to strike a balance between these two positions. Um, it does pretty well, I would argue. It does really well. And there is always room for improvement. And we should not just rest on our laurels and say, what we have is good enough. I'm not going to discourage anyone from trying to find better solutions. But I also accept that our current solutions took many hundreds of well. years. Our current solutions took many hundreds of years, and our laws have mechanisms in them for self-correction. And that is ultimately the most important thing. The most important thing is that the law can adapt to the times. Mm. I guess in, in, a, in a sense, although it's not, what, you, what you're saying is, although it's not perfect, there are mechanisms that ensure that every day there is the chance to do better. Absolutely. Well, with that inspiring note, I think we, we should end it there. And, uh, yeah. We'll Congratulations see. on your bonus episode, everyone. You heard it here first. With every day, we can make up, we can wake up and make up our minds to be better than the people we were yesterday. And when we all make that conscious decision, we all collectively decide that every day our society can be better too. Well, that's a soundbite that's being turned into a short. <laughs> uh, well, do you know exactly what to say to, to have me be inspired? <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Catch you Let's later. Let's hope that other people are also inspired. Good night, y'all.